So in today's lecture, we'll be looking at the sand jowl meridian. So this meridian has a number of different names. Firstly, it can be called the sun jowl meridian, or it can be translated to its English version, which is the triple energizer meridian, or the triple heater meridian, or triple burner meridian, depending on the translation. So the abbreviations are similar to the names. So for the sand jowl meridian, it's abbreviated as SJ, or the triple energizer is abbreviated as TE, or the triple heater as TH. And the two most commonly used terms is either Sun Jiao, which is keeps the Mandarin name, or the triple energizer. So the full name of this meridian is the Sun Jiao Meridian of the Hand Xiaoyang. And because this is a young meridian of the hand, it runs from the hand up towards the head. There are 23 points in total, and the common indications between points are for conditions of the head, eyes, ear, throat, chest, and because of the pathway of the meridian, it can also treat the lateral side of the body. So now let's look at the course of this meridian. So firstly, let's zoom in on the pathway from the finger to the shoulder. So this meridian originates at the tip of the ring finger. It then ascends the dorsal aspect of the hand between the fourth and fifth metacarpal bones. So as you can see, this is here and here on the image. It then continues ascending the wrist and then the lateral aspect of the forearm between the radius and the ulna. It then passes through the olecranon over here and from here it continues ascending along the lateral aspect of the upper arm. It continues its ascension all the way up to the shoulder. From the shoulder, it travels along the posterior shoulder where it passes behind the gallbladder meridian of the foot, Xiaoyang. It continues over the supraclavicular fossa over here and spreads to the chest to connect with the pericardium over here. It then descends through the diaphragm, down to the abdomen, and joins its pertaining organ, the upper, middle, and lower jowls. So now let's look at the major branches. So the first branch originates in the chest, and it ascends and emerges from the supraclavicular fossa, up here, and from here it ascends the neck. So these two arrows are actually the same arrow, just looking at different perspectives. One is looking from an anterior perspective, and the other one is looking from a lateral perspective. And then from the neck, it ascends to behind the ear. It circles the ear to the anterior corner of the hairline and terminates in the infraorbital region. So that's that green circle showing you the infraorbital region. The second branch is in the auricular area. And this branch originates behind the ear, retroauricular, and enters the ear. It then emerges in front of the ear and crosses the previous branch at the cheek and reaches the outer canthus to link with the gallbladder meridian. And the frequently used points on this meridian are Guan Chong, Sanjia 1, Zhong Ju, Sanjia 3, Wai Guan, Sanjia 5, Ji Gao, Sanjia 6, Jian Liao, Sanjiao 14, Yi Feng, Sanjiao 17, Ermen, Sanjiao 21, and Si Ju Kong, Sanjiao 23. So now let's look at the first point on this meridian, Guan Chong, Sanjiao 1. So this point is a Jing well and metal point of the meridian, and it's located on the lateral side of the ring finger. So that's the fourth metacarpal, and it's about 0.1 sun posterior to the corner of the nail. So it's this corner over here. The indications for this point, it can be used for headache and redness of the eyes, sore throat, stiffness of the tongue, febrile diseases, and sunstroke. Needling is a perpendicular shallow insertion, 0.1 sun, or we're going to prick the point to cause bleeding. So the next point is Yemen, Sanjiao 2. This is a shing spring and water point of the meridian and is found by asking the patient to clench the fist. And then this point is located in the depression 
proximal to the margin of the web between the ring and small fingers. So what that means is when they've got a clenched fist, it's going to be proximal to this part here. But also you mustn't go too far proximal that you pass the metacarpal phalangeal joints over here. It's actually in the depression between these two points. The indications for this point can be used for headache, redness of the eyes, sudden deafness, sore throat and malaria. And it can also be used for pain in the arm. Our needing, it will be oblique insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 twin, towards the interspace of the metacarpal bones. So that's this space here. That's what it's talking about, the interspace. The next point is Zhongju, Sanjiao 3. This is a shoe stream and wood point. And this point is found when the fist is clenched again. This point is on the dorsum of the hand. So that means the back of the hand between the fourth and fifth metacarpal bones. So if we count here, it's the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. So it's these two here. And it's in the depression proximal to the metacarpal phalangeal joint. So here's the metacarpal phalangeal joints. And we're in the depression proximal and between these two bones. The indications for this point, it can be used for headache, redness of the eyes, deafness, and tinnitus. It can also be used for sore throats or febrile diseases. And finally, it can be used for pain in the elbow and arm and motor impairment of the fingers. Our insertion is perpendicular, 0.3 to 0.5 twin. So just be aware there's quite a shallow insertion as there's not much muscle yet. And remember that this is a frequently used point. The next point is Yang Qi, Sanjiao 4. This is the Yuan source point of the meridian. And it is located on the transverse crease of the wrist. So remember in the previous lectures we did the pericardium meridian. And in that meridian we also had to use the transverse crease of the wrist. But this time we are on the dorsal aspect. That time we are on the ventral or anterior aspect. So we first found the transverse crease of the wrist over here. And it's in the depression lateral to the tendon of the extensor digitorum communis. So that's this one here. And we've got to go lateral to it. The indications for this point can be used for redness with pain and swelling of the eye, deafness, swelling and pain of the throat. It can also be used for dry mouth, and then it can be used for pain in the arm, shoulder and wrist. Needling is perpendicular insertion 0.3 to 0.5 twin. So this is similar to the previous point. And also remember, because there's not a lot of muscle in this area, we cannot do deep insertions. The next point is Wei Guan, Sanjiao 5. So this is a Luau connecting point of the Sanjiao meridian, but it's also a confluent point of the Yang linking vessel. Its location, it's located Tu Tsun above Sanjiao 4 over here, which is level with the wrist crease. And it's between the radius, this one, and the ulna. So it's between the two bones of the forearm. So the indications of this point, so remember, if it's a confluent point of the young linking vessel, this means it can treat conditions along the young linking vessel's pathway. So if we look here at the image, I'm brought in the image of the young linking vessel. So as you can see, it runs up the side of the body to the head region and then circles the head region. So that means that this point can be used for things such as headache, redness and swelling and pain of the eye and deafness and tinnitus because of the flow of this meridian. It can also be used for pain of the hypochondriac region and then pain of the cheek, strained neck, motor impairment of the elbow and arm and pain of the fingers as well as hand trembling. And these are all related to both being able to treat along the Sanjiao meridian as well as this young linking vessel. Then it can also be used for febrile diseases due to exogenous pathogens and then also for scrofula. Needling is perpendicular insertion 0.5 to 1 twin. So the next point is Jigao, Sanjiao 6. So this is a Jing River and fire point of the meridian, and it is located 3 Tsun above Yangqi, Sanjiao 4. And it's between the radius and ulna, so between the radius and the ulna, and it's on the radial side of the extensor digitorum muscle. So let's just see which muscle this is. So I've brought in an image here to show you. So you see highlighted in pink is the extensor digitorum, we're on the radial side, which is this side of the muscle. So we're still between the bones, but we're on the radial side of this muscle. 
and we'll get a better idea of where exactly this point is in the practical aspect of our lectures. So the indications for this point, this point is a frequently used point and one of the most common indications is constipation. It's an important point for treating constipation and that's why I've highlighted in red. But then it can also treat tinnitus, deafness, acute aphonia, scrofula, pain in the hypochondriac region, and febrile diseases. Insertion, so we can go slightly deeper now because we're in a more muscular area. It's 0.8 to 1.2 tun perpendicular insertion. The next point is Hui Zong, Sanjiao 7. So this is a sheet left point of the meridian, and it is located at the level of Sanjiao 6, which means 3 tun superior to Sanjiao 4, but it's one finger breadth lateral to Sanjiao 6. So this is on the radial side of the ulna over here. And remember, Sanjiao 6 is on the radial side of the extensor digitor muscle. That muscle that runs here, and this one would then be on the ulnar side of this muscle over here. Indications, this point can be used for deafness, epilepsy, and contracture and pain of the arm. Insertion is perpendicular, 0.5 to 1 sun. The next point is Sun Yang Luo, Sanjiao 8. So this point is located 4 sun above Sanjiao 4 over here, and it's between the radius and the ulna. Indications, it can be used for deafness, sudden loss of voice, toothache, or because of its location, pain in the hand or arm. Needling is perpendicular, 0.5 to 1 sun. The next point is Sidu, Sanjiao 9. This point is located on the lateral side of the forearm, 5 sun below the olecranon, over here, this bone here, and it's between the radius and the ulna. Indications, it can be used for deafness, sudden loss of voice, toothache, and sore throat. And because of where it's located, it can be used for pain of the arm and hand. Needling is the same as the previous points. It's perpendicular insertion, 0.5 to 1 sun. The next point is Tianjing, Sanjiao 10. This is the her sea and earth point of the meridian, and it is located when the elbow is flexed. So this is flexion, when you're shrinking this angle here, and it is located in the depression, one sun superior to the olecranon. See the olecranon is over here now. These are all the muscles, so you can't see it as clearly, but it would be over here. And we're going one sun superior to it. So it's in the tendon of the triceps muscle. Indications, it can be used for deafness, epilepsy, scrofula and goiter. It can also be used for migraines, pain of the hypochondriac, and because of its location, pain of the neck, shoulder and arm. Needling, so if you look at the top right image, you can see there's not a lot of muscle here. So it's perpendicular insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 soon, as we cannot go very deep because we will hit the bone. The next point is Qing Leng Yuan, Sanjiao 11. This point is located one soon above Tianjing, Sanjiao 10, and it's also located with the elbow flexed, so in this position. So this point can be used for headache, eye pain, pain in the hypochondrium, and because of its location, pain in the arm or shoulder. Needling is perpendicular insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 soon. The next point is Xiao Luao, Sanjiao 12. So this point is located on a line joining Tianjing, Sanjiao 10, down here, and Jian Liao, Sanjiao 14, up here, which we'll still learn how to locate. And it's 3 Tsun above Qing Leng Yuan, Sanjiao 11. So remember, Sanjiao 11 is 1 Tsun up over here, and then we've got to go 3 more Tsun above that. 1, 2, 3. So we're actually 4 Tsun from Sanjiao 10. So the indications of this point, it can be used for headache, toothache, and pain of the neck and back. Needling is perpendicular insertion, and now it's slightly deeper, 0.5 to 0.7, as we're getting closer to the muscular area of the triceps. Next, we're looking at Nao Huai, Sanjiao 13. So this point is located two-thirds of the distance between a line drawn between Tianjing, Sanjiao 10, and Jianliao, Sanjiao 14. So if we look here, draw the line between 
Sanjay 14 and Sanjay 10. And now we're two thirds of the distance. So if we divide it into three equal parts over here and over here, we're two thirds from Sanjay 10. So two thirds from the bottom up. This is approximately three tsun below Sanjay 14. And then we're at the posterior border of the deltoid. So you see here, this is the deltoid muscle and we're at its posterior border. Indications, it can be used for scrofula or goiter. And then because of its location, it can be used for contracture and pain of the upper limb. Needling is perpendicular insertion, 0.5 to 0.8 sun. The next point is Jian Liao, Sanjiao 14. So this point is located in the depression formed when the arm is abducted. So abducted is when you lift the arm away from the body like this in the image. And then when you do this, in muscular and thin individuals, you'll see two depressions that form. So the anterior depression is known as Jian Yu, large intestine 15, whereas we use the posterior depression for Jian Liao, Sanjiao 14. And this is posterior and inferior to the lateral extremity of the acromion. So this is the acromion here, and we posterior, so that's behind, this way, and inferior. So it's either inferior or lateral, depending on the position of the arm. If the arm is adducted, so it's by the side, then it would be inferior. If it's abducted, which means it's away from the side, then it's lateral and not inferior. And then it's posterior to Jan Yu, large intestine 15. And then this point is mostly used for disorders or diseases of the shoulder and arm. Needling is perpendicular or oblique insertion, 1 to 1.5 sun. So because we're going into this large muscular area, we can go much deeper on this point. And then the insertion depends on the position of the arm. So if abducted, then the insertion will be perpendicular. So abducted is like this image, whereas if it's adducted, and then it should be inferior oblique insertion towards the elbow. The next point is Tian Liao, Sanjiao 15. So this point is located at the midpoint of a line drawn between Jian Jing, GB21 up here, and Q Yuan, small intestine 13 over there. So we draw a line between the two like this, and it's at the midpoint. And this is usually at the superior angle of the scapula. So the superior angle is this part of the scapula over here. And we're normally at the top of this point. Indications, this point can be used for pain of the shoulder and arm, stiffness and pain of the neck. And those are all local functions. Insertion is 0.3 to 0.5 sun. The next point is Tian Yo, Sanjiao 16. This point is located directly under the posterior aspect of the mastoid process. So let's just have a look at where the mastoid process is. So as you can see on this image, here's the mastoid process. So we're directly under the posterior aspect. So this aspect, we're directly under that. And it's level with the angle of the mandible. So here's the angle of the mandible down here. So we level with it at the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. Remember that SCM is short for sternocleidomastoid, and that's this muscle. Indications, this point can be used for headache, dizziness, blurred vision, stiffness of the neck, sudden deafness, pain and swelling of the throat, and epistaxis. It can also be used for scrofula and pain of the shoulder and back. Needling is perpendicular insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 soon. The next point is Yi Feng, Sanjiao 17. So this point is located behind the earlobe over here, and it's in the depression between the mastoid process and the mandible. So if we bring that same image from the last slide up, here's the mandible over here, and that's the mastoid process over there. So it's in the depression between about here. So the indications for this point are related to its location. It can be used for deafness and tinnitus because it's close to the ear, it can also be used for deviation of the eye and mouth, seborrheic dermatitis, trismus, and a swollen cheeks, as it's close to the cheek region as well. It can also be used for scrofula. Needling is perpendicular insertion, 0.5 to 1 sun. And this is a frequently used point. The next point is Chi Mai, Sanjiao 18. So this point is located between Jiao San, 
Sandow 20 and Yi Feng Sandow 17. So Sandow 20 on the image is up here and Sandow 17 is down here. And we're drawing a line between the two, but we're following the line of the ear. And then this point is one third of this distance. So we divide it into three equal parts like this, yeah and yeah. And then Sanjiao 18, Shi Mai is over here on the first third. The indications, this point can be used for headache. And then locally for tinnitus and deafness and infantile convulsions. Our insertion, so as you can see the skull is here, so it's a horizontal insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 tsun, or we can prick to cause bleeding. Next we're looking at Lu Shi, Sanjiao 19. So this point is located between Sanjiao 20, Jiao Sun, and Yi Feng, Sanjiao 17. So remember Sanjiao 20 up here and Yi Feng down here. And we now two thirds from Yi Feng. So one third was Sanjiao 18 and two thirds is Sanjiao 19. And this line follows the helix. So that's the outer portion of the ear. The indications for this point, similar to the previous, headache, tinnitus and deafness, and infantile convulsions. Again, horizontal insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 tsun. The next point is Jiao San, Sanjiao 20. It is located above the apex of the ear, within the hairline of the temple, directly above the tip of the ear when the ear is folded forward. So what you do is you fold the ear slightly forward to find the high point, the tip of it, and then this is where the point is located. We will cover this more in the practical session. This point can be used for headache, stiffness of the neck, redness with pain and swelling of the eye, and cataracts. It can also be used for toothache and swelling of the cheeks. Our insertion is horizontal, 0.3 to 0.5 tsun. Next is Ermen, Sanjiao 21. So this point is located in the depression formed when the mouth is opened. So if you look at the image on the right, you can see the bottom right circle. This shows you what the condyloid process does when your mouth opens. So as you can see, it moves forward and allows you to needle into this opening. And the second part of the location is it's slightly anterior and superior to the condyloid process of the mandible. So if we look at the bottom right circle, this is the condyloid process. And this location of being anterior and superior is actually when the mouth is closed. So this is the bottom left image over here. And then you can see the point is slightly anterior and superior to where the condyloid process sits. The indications for this point, it can be used for deafness, tinnitus and otorrhea. It can also be used for toothache, temporal mandibular joint syndrome, TMJ syndrome. And our needling is a perpendicular insertion, 0 0.5 to 1 soon. And we have the mouth slightly open when we needle. The next point is Erhe Liao, Sandal 22. So this point is located posterior to the temporal hairline. So here's the temporal hairline. Yeah, it's just posterior to this. And it's level with the root of the auricle. So that's referring to this part here, the root of the auricle. And it's at the posterior border of the superior temporal artery. So if we look at this image here, so highlighted in green is the temporal artery. So we're just posterior to it. So we are between the root of the auricle over here and we're just posterior to this artery over here. The indications for this point, it can be used for local conditions such as headache, tinnitus, and trismus. Needling is a horizontal insertion, 0.1 to 0.3 tsun. And the caution here is you must make sure that you're not puncturing the temporal artery when inserting your needle. The next point is Se Ju Kong, Sanjiao 23. So this point is located on the lateral end of the eyebrow. So here's the eyebrow and we're going to its lateral end over here. It's in the depression on the supraorbital margin. So here's your orbital margin, this part of the eye. So we're in the depression on this margin. The indications for this point, it can be used for epilepsy and then locally it can be used for headache, blurring of the vision, redness and swelling and pain of the eye or twitching of the eyelids. It can also be used for toothache. Needling is a horizontal insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 tsun. And remember that this point is one of the few points that is not suitable for direct moxibustion. So that's the end of the Sanjiao Meridian. 
So in the next lecture, we'll be looking at the gallbladder meridian of the foot Shaoyang.